great to meet you, man. Right on. Uh, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So we wanted to start just by saying congrats. Um, might love myself. First number one at Active Rock. Um, how cool is that? And also, how cool is that with such an important message behind that song? I mean, it's amazing. It, it, it's amazing and it's hard to process. And it, it all I don't know, everything all at the same time. It's pretty amazing. And the, the fact that that song was the first one to go number one uh, for Beartooth feels really good because you know, historically, my music has been quite self-deprecating and a little more focusing on kind of the the hard parts of the mental journey through life that a lot of us go through and, you know, that I was going through at the time. But, you know, the first song that I really, really wrote, well, the first song that I ever wrote about self-love and feeling like maybe I can cut myself a break and, you know, learn to be a, a better person to myself. The fact that that was the first thing to go number one, I think, makes sense to me. Um, yeah, and I'm just very proud of it. I think it's really cool. Caleb, it's it's been neat to see you know your your music growing and your fan base growing, and you know your your Instagram popularity going. I was scrolling on there uh, this week, and I see you've cleaned your hotel room uh, from what you posted <laughs> earlier. Um, and I also saw well, that. You know, yeah, kind of. I mean, it depends on where okay. you look. But, yeah, uh, I also this saw really that. nice. Late, late last year, you were hanging out with Rob from Metallica. And, you know, I, I thought that was so cool to see for a musician like you. We've got to hang out with Rob before uh, doing something just like this. And it's one of those pinch me moments for us as radio DJs. What is it like for you as a, you know, a guy coming up in the rock world? You're getting all the success and you've got, you know, what seems like anyways, the support of your peers in arguably the biggest band in the world, Metallica. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it was... I don't know. What do you, there, it's hard to kind of put that into words. Um, yeah, I was, you know, uh, at the Steve Aoki show and well, I was at the F1 event um, in Las Vegas and I was at a Steve Aoki show and, you know, we're all kind of hanging out back there. And then Rob from Metallica walks up and um, my good friend, Brad, who's um, been Steve's photographer for years and years now. Um, he was like, dude, you got to go say hi to him. And, and, you know, I'm sitting there terrified. I was like, what the hell? Like, I was literally just listening to, you know, Metallica Live in 89 at the gym six hours before that. And, and yeah, and I went up to him and I was just like, hey, dude, like, we played a lot of shows together um, over the years and festivals and things and introduced myself. And he was like, oh, hey, yeah. And hung out for a minute and nicest dude in the world. And I don't care how, you know, successful we get or, many people you meet or get to know like Metallica is still Metallica <laughs> like that. That's never going to be an easy one to process, but uh, I, I feel very blessed to say the least. What, uh, what was it like bringing in a collaborator um, in, in Hardy for, for the better me? What was that process like? Was, was it different for you? Uh, yeah, very. I mean, I've never done it before, you know, first collaboration on a bear tooth record ever. Uh, first feature, I guess is a better way to put it. But we got to know each other over the years. Uh, he's an amazing dude. And um, we just became friends. And he's been down with the metal scene and, you know, kind of the world that I grew up in and came from for a long time. Yeah, uh, he was playing in L.A. and I went and saw him play and we were hanging out at the Roxy afterwards and kind of hung out all night. And then at the end, I was like, you know what, if we like, what would I would you be into working together at some point? And he said, absolutely. A couple of days later, I called him and told him about this song that I've had for about a year that I think would be a killer uh, with his voice on it. And he was there, no questions asked. He was in. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, what? It was like he he went and played a stadium. And then the next day at noon, he was in his studio with his engineer and he cut the vocal in like 45 minutes. Um, the, the man is, a, is truly a trained Nashville professional. And uh, yeah, to be able to, to be able to have that, you know, piece of music and that vehicle for us to be able to hang out together and play golf and film it and call it a music video was, uh, was great. <laughs> All right, Caleb, I, I find it interesting now, especially with how music's going with artists, you know, it seems like everybody wants to get together with their friends and their favorite musicians and put stuff out together. And you mentioned that this, uh, the song with Hardy was your first feature collaboration. Uh, you do all the music for your, your, your band as well. You do everything yourself. You know, Dave Grohl had that approach with the Foo Fighters at the beginning, and then eventually he's like, this is a lot of work. <laughs> you know, you're doing everything yourself. Do you ever see a time where, where that changes for you, or do you just like having control and knowing that what you put out is 100% you? 
Uh, for Bear Tooth, that's that's really kind of the whole point, you know. Yeah. Is is I I've been in bands before with collaboration, and I still love to collaborate, and I like producing other people and co-writing with people and and whatever. But you know, Bear Tooth is me. Um, it, it's like the way that I express myself, and obviously, I have the members of the band that it would not be the same without, and I have a very big team with management booking and and all these amazing people uh but at the core of it you know i I made a promise to myself that no matter what beartooth is going to be me alone in a room writing down what i'm going through in real time and making songs about it and not filtering that and being as honest as possible so i think if i did get rid of that it would kind of dilute the goal that i set out to do which was just make something for myself you know that makes me um it's the one thing i do with music that makes me really feel whole i get to actually play the drums and i get to play the guitars and the bass and i get to mix it and produce it and all that and sing it and you know when live i just get to sing um so it's nice to be able to do all those things that i love and Caleb, you know, I, I, I've seen you, you know, publicly talk about, you know, your anxiety and depression, and it's in the themes of some of your songs and your music as well. And, you know, you're about to go out on this big tour and, you know, does that help you in, in that side of your life? And, you know, when fans come up to you and they're like, you know, bear to save me and your music saved me, does that help, you know, bring you back down and ground you with your, your fans that might be going through the same things that you're going through? For sure. I, I mean, bear to really was the start of my therapy sessions, you know, just at least for myself, like it, Beartooth was the first time that I spoke out loud about a lot of the things that I was really struggling with um, instead of just kind of keeping it inside. And, and, you know, hopefully people take that and what it seems to have done over the years, is people understand that that's what it is for me and how helpful it, they see how helpful it's been in my life. So um, I, I think people get it, you know, they understand the point. And even with the older stuff, that's really self deprecating and, and very painful to listen to in a lot of ways. I think people just kind of understand that it's me trying to express what it feels like to be in a place that sometimes all of us feel like we're at, that nobody really likes to talk about. You know, that can be very empowering for some people. So, yeah, to be be able to have this project that is like my my life and my, my job and also very therapeutic for me and therapeutic for other people, I... I mean, I am the most blessed person on this planet. At least that's what I feel like, you know. One more for me. You know, we're we're coming towards something called Bell Let's Talk Day up here in Canada, which has raised millions of dollars, you know, in in the fight for mental health. Um, But more importantly, you know, has continued and started some really important conversations. So, you know, we wanted to congratulate you on on two years of sobriety, you know, and, and sharing that journey so publicly and. And and in addition to congratulating you, just ask what's made a difference in your mental health, Caleb? Yeah, um, you know, the 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 quitting drinking was really a byproduct of kind of that moment, you know, where you just it was like kind of post COVID. I was just looking in the mirror and I was like, what are you doing um, with your life and with who you are? And, you know, like, let's just really try. Like, let's really try for a while and see what happens and see what can change. You know, I had all these things that I've always wanted to achieve. Like, I wanted to be in really good shape. I wanted to to feel really good about myself and and not hate who I was and hate who I was looking at. Because, you know, whenever I'd look in the mirror, a lot of the times I knew it was somebody who wasn't trying and somebody who was making excuses and who was not learning the disciplines required to... um, gain mental stability as somebody who is predisposed to things like depression and anxiety. And that's just kind of the way my chemical balance works. And, and, you know, when I decided it was time to see what, what real discipline could do for me, it was like the, that word sounds so scary. You know, discipline means like hard work and doing things you don't want to do. Um, But so quickly, you know, within a week, I, I realized that, I'd never been happier and I'd never felt maybe happier isn't the right word. I'd never felt more in control of my decisions and my mind and, and my ability to do things. And then, you know, a week later after, you know, I decided I wanted to do this and then I decided I want to quit drinking. And then a week later I write riptide. And then two years later, you know, I'm sitting here in front of you talking with, 
you know, we're going out on a sold out tour with this new record and all these things. It's like sometimes doing those things for maybe an hour a day that you don't want to do is exactly what you need to do and, and to keep your mental self together and stable. And it goes such a long way and you're always proud of yourself. You know, that's one thing I will say is if I could give any encouragement to people that are kind of struggling with, with where they're at and they feel stuck, which I was for 28 years, 29 years, trust me, I know what it feels like. Um, whether it's, you know, maybe making that phone call to book a therapy session or, you know, getting in the car to go to the gym or, you know, just talking to your friend about these feelings that you're having or these thoughts that you're having. Never one time have I regretted doing those things, but every single time I have not done it, I've regretted it every single time. Um, so like, if that's some personal encouragement from somebody who literally, you know, I thought I was going to be probably dead at 35 years old, you know, just like boozed out and, you just washed up and whatever. Um, just say yes to it and try it. It's worth it every single time. Oh yeah, man. it was great. Thank you. Right on. No problem. Uh, thanks for your time, by the way. Uh, I think we're out of it. Unfortunately, this was awesome. Uh, thank you. It was, it was great getting a chance to talk to you and get to know you. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate y'all taking the time and thanks for giving it to me.